Hits. Hits music. Today from four, John Holmes. From one, Liz Kershaw. Right now. It's Adam and Goff. Laura, Laura, plant the data. Lolly beef. Hello and welcome to the big British castle. It's time for Adam and Goff to broadcast on your digi machine. Joe is away, bouncing round and round Los Angeles. But Mr. Jennings is here with his lovely cheery face. And that is a place. Yay! That's Vampire Weekend with Cousins. Hey, this is Adam Buxton here, and I'm joined today by... Garth Jennings. How you doing, Garth? I'm very well. How you doing, Adam Buxton? I'm good, fine. Nice to see you. Beautiful day you've brought with you. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, yeah, Joe is away. He's in Los Angeles. I'm not exactly sure what he's doing there, but it's probably ponce shaped i hope he doesn't get any sort of those viral infections he got last time i sat in remember he got all shingled up got didn't he shingles he's in a right old viral state that's right well so that's... hopefully this is a you know a bug free trip for joe yeah, stress free stress free yeah just come back with a little pot belly and a cocktail <laughs> you've just described me yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming and stepping in you know i think it's probably quite daunting for someone to visit our stinky little shack in the middle of nowhere. I wonder what you're about to say there. No, I, 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 to be honest, this is like a holiday for me mm-hmm. because normally at this time I'd be taking the kids to swimming lessons and that's at least two hours of, you know, running around in swimming pools and people yeah. not putting the right shoes on. Um, and that's them just, swimming lessons. Yeah. I mean, they, to teach them how to swim or to teach them how to swim really good. Well, I, you have to, cause we've got quite a few kids. I have to take the ones that can't swim mm-hmm. while the others that are having the lessons are swimming up the other end of the pool. It's a really boring, uh, conversation to share with your listeners. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, not at Which, all. But the reason I mention it is because this is so nice. I've got a nice cup of coffee. Yeah. Sitting here with you lot. What kind of muffin have you got going on? Oh, it's a on blueberry there? muffin. Mate. It's a little Australian place around the corner that does them and they're really warm and nice. What's it called? Blueberry. Oh, what? The blueberry muffin or? No, I, the can't, place. I can't mention it. Oh. Because it'll be a BBC thing, won't it? Oh, uh, Ken, it's called caffeine. 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 And are they all Australian? They're all Australian. And there are a lot of piercings there, mate. <laughs> no, they're, they're pretty pierce-free. Yeah. A few tattoos, I think. Um, it's a shame that they're pierce-free, because I was just trying to think of some tortured way of um, getting Bronholm in there. Oh, Bronholm. We've got a clip uh, that someone created for us, actually. We'll play it a bit later on. Um, Taffin is on this weekend. Is it actually playing? I think it's tomorrow, somewhere on the BBC, Pierce Brosnan as Taffin. It's tonight. Is it tonight? <laughs> wow, that's exciting. Um, here, uh, oh, have you got the clip there, James? Have you got the extended... No, oh, just play the normal one. Then maybe you shouldn't be living here! <laughs> <laughs> Someone sent in a uh, even... It more extended one that we might play a little bit later on. <laughs> That's exciting, isn't it? Now, listen, Garth, <laughs> you're taking over Joe's com- Torpedo Commander Black Squadron duties today. Yeah, I'm going to stand in like the, you know, the new boss, the yeah. new Sergeant Major who's come in to shape up the troops. Black Squadron, of course, is our elite listening force that listen to the show live from 10 until 10.30. And they are the fittest of the fist, the fit, fittest of the fist, <laughs> the best mm. of the best. And they are going to get a, uh, a squadron command right now. Once the squadron command is issued, their challenge is to take photographs enacting that challenge and then send them in to the following address. They can either text them to 64046 or email the pictures to Adam and Joe dot six music at BBC dot co dot UK. And, of course, if you send in your pictures, you are agreeing thereby for us to possibly feature some of them on the blog. Um, And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know, I think. Yeah. So, Garth, we're going to fire off uh, the strokes taken for a fool immediately after you issue this command. So uh, stand by, Black Squadron, with your cameras. Here is the command now from Commander Jennings. Okay, the command is catalogue pose. Mm, Yes. That's the strokes with Taken for a Fool. Hey, this is Adam Buxton here with Garth Jennings this week, filling in for Joe, who is away. Very nice to be with you listeners this lovely Saturday morning. I mean, it's the kind of morning that makes you feel very happy to be alive. I'm so happy to be alive, Adam. And uh, I hope it's nice where you are as well, listeners. If it's not, if it's rainy, then we can't be held responsible. (laughs) Hey, Garth, how many times have you seen people stealing things have you ever witnessed a theft in public no 
Um, I don't really... I remember my, watching my sister try to steal something when she was little. Right. But we were kids. Bit of shoplifting. A little bit of minor shoplifting. But that... No, I don't think I've seen anyone. So I f came home the other day to find my bike had almost been stolen. Oh, really? There was yeah. someone actually fiddling with it? No, they weren't actually... They'd, they'd, they'd sort of tried to fiddle with it and yeah. then thought, oh, it's not going to come off. So they thought, well, let's batter it to pieces instead. Yes. Thanks for that, That's whoever you did. are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't actually steal it. I'll just kick the spokes until you see, the wheels You see, if you did bed. that in, in shops, if you thought, oh, no, I can't steal this, yeah. you know, this crockery so set. I'm going to ruin it. I'd just smash it on the floor <laughs> instead. <laughs> yeah. It'd be quite a good idea. I wanted to steal those bananas, but they're looking. I'll just stamp on them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. What is the logic of just trashing the bike? You're so oh, outraged. I can't this guy's chained his bike up properly. <laughs> What's that all about? <laughs> I'm gonna kick the wheels in. That'll teach him a lesson. And I'm going to really bend his bell <laughs> right round so he'd have to twist his wrist at an Steady awkward angle to play on, it. Mate. You can't say bend his bell. <laughs> Before 11 on a Saturday morning. I'm sorry. The man. other day I was in the supermarket and I was in the supermarket queue and I looked around and uh, next to where everyone was queuing up, they had one of those deli counter things. Oh, yeah. Bits of couscous and strawberries and, you know, all yeah. that. With, uh, with a sneeze shield on top of it. You know, they have like a, the, the little sneeze shield so you can't just go, Whoop! and everyone gets you. Germs. Anyway, there was a lady wandering around. She must have been around the 50, 55 mark, fairly smartly dressed. And she had a little tub and she was spooning bits of couscous in there into the tub. A few strawberries here, a uh, bit of chicken salad. Couscous, strawberries and I mean, she was. I, I, she was trying everything. Okay. But she was just eating it. Just having a little eat. <laughs> like it was a buffet on a cruise. No, 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 wait. On a was cruise. she putting that spoon back in? No, 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 no. Okay, because that's, that's naughty. Yeah, I don't think she was putting the spoon back in, but she was basically just treating it as a free buffet. Um, just wandering around there. And then at the end of it... Supermarkets, there is a little bit of license there, though, isn't it? Because, really? Well, we often give our kids a, 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 a bag of grapes at the beginning. Yeah. Because that keeps them quiet. By yeah, but the you're going to pay get, for the grapes. Yeah, but by the time we get to the end, there's only about three grapes left. So you think, oh, I may as well not pay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So you know we're talking about people stealing things. <laughs> yeah. It's me. <laughs> Are you seriously, like, you have the grapes, and then by the end you think, oh, well, they've gone now. Well, they, well, they, to pay I think for. they weigh the grapes, don't they? There's only two grapes. Oh, there. I see. They <laughs> weigh them. So that you've, is got, the so you've got four grapes and a mass of stalks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're too poor to afford the whole bunch. Yeah. We just, want, we just lo love the stalks. <laughs> the stalks. We just nibble on those when we get home. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like I... You're not impressed, though, by the fact that this lady was doing some free shoplifting. I mean, that, maybe that doesn't count as shoplifting. She was just having a nice little buffet. You know, the trick is to be blasé, I guess, mm -hmm. isn't it? To just get in there with a the spoon and not try and look like you're trying to hide it. Yeah. Just make it look like, yeah, I'm just having a bite to eat. That would be fun, wouldn't it? And then just go and uncork a bottle of wine, have a yeah, little... Yeah, just, just neck it. Glass of wine. Just neck it. Top tips from Garth Jennings. Yeah, that's all I can offer you people. Right, now, here's <laughs> a uh, here's a free play for you, listeners. This is a band that I knew nothing about before last week when I filched the CD from someone's desk here at Six Music. That's not true. It was uh, it was given to me by someone legitimately, because even that's a crime. You can't do that. I yeah, just go around stealing that, CDs. Yeah. I mean, it's the world's yeah. gone mad. Can't steal anything these days. Um, this is Tune Yards. Do you know any, anything about Tune Yards? The only thing I know about them is that they're spelt funny. They, right. they use upper and lower uppercase, case. lowercase. Uppercase, lowercase, lowercase. Yeah. Uh, and when I listened to this, to me it sounded like uh, a kind of feisty black lady singing the heck out of an unusual uh, hybrid hip-hop um, indie pop song. I'm sold. But then I googled her... And she is about as unlikely looking as you could possibly imagine. You should check her out. I think her name is Meryl something or other. She's a, a kind of um, blunt featured white lady. I think she's a kind of New York. She'll York's... be so pleased with that description. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, did you hear what Adam called you on the radio? <laughs> a blunt featured white lady. That came out wrong. Yeah, yeah. she's she's attractive. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah, very in a blunt sort of... featured kind of way. Yeah, but she's Good. incredibly charismatic, and she's got this amazing way of singing and delivering her stuff so some of the sounds you hear on this track that i'm about to play um this track is called my country and it sort of starts off with sounds it, it sounds a little bit like a horn section sort of going and i think it's her just making those noises <laughs> <laughs> but i really enjoyed this i hope you like it too this is tune yards with my country i'm a root i'm a shoot they're my wee. 
That's uh, Desmond Decker there with 007 Shantytown. Adam and, uh, this is the Adam and Joe show, but we're here joined by Garth, who's filling in for Joe today. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing, Garth? I'm doing all right. Yeah, good. Later on in the programme, we've got some Song Wars songs to play, you listeners. Garth and I entered into the challenge of writing songs, composing songs and recording songs on the subject of toys and games. Yeah. Uh, how do you think yours went? It's gone all right, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a, a mad dash. Quietly confident? Um, yep. I think that I've created the most unlistenably demented <laughs> pile of dog plops <laughs> that's ever been on this program. And if you're a long-time listener, that's quite an achievement, you will know, right? You're so. just putting yourself down. I mean, obviously... Didn't you win last week? I did, your... yeah. But See? Th this is no Katie and Willie. Katie and Willie. That was a... That's a smash. You could release that. Welcome, lovely couple, to a happy family. It's the way you say family. This is no Kate and Willie, let me tell you. It's... Yeah, but you've done this before. You've done this whole build-up where you've yeah. gone, nah, it's not going to be any good. Then wham, you come out with your weapons of mass destruction. All right. Blow me away in your song wars. And... You can be the judge of that. Shortly All after right. 11 o'clock, we're going to be unveiling those songs. But our Black Squadron command this morning was catalogue pose. And you've been sending in your photographs. Thank you very much, Black Squadron. I can't believe how many people do this for you every week. It's <laughs> incredible. And they're really good. Yeah. There's one. There's a guy from Adam from Sheffield has managed to find a human skeleton mm -hmm. and dress it up and put it into a catalogue pose in a brilliant way. Look at that. That's perfect. Sometimes Torpedo Commander Cornish sits there and he sort of goes, "I think one of these photos were hanging around already." I mean, there's one here definitely that someone sent in a very nice photograph of their dog in a sweater looking extremely handsome very handsome dog from mark in gretna green or maybe mark gretna is that his name <laughs> i don't know anyway but he's in front of a christmas tree yeah he's giving it away mark then. that's a giveaway mate you just <laughs> had that one in the locker there and you just popped it out for the squadron yeah. that is not squadron like behavior mark yeah. you're out of the squadron just drop and give me 20 a lot more than 20 <laughs> all right one-handed thank you mark I've got this one from Steve from Saltash. Yeah. That's phenomenal. The man is, has got into his garden. He's got into a three-piece suit. He's got, I think that's a wig. I hope <laughs> it is, and I hope I haven't offended you. Um, and he is next to, next to all his garden. And he's pointing at the shrubbery with his he's hand. He's got the point right, because yeah. they always do that sort of casual look into the distance, like, oh, what's that over there? Mm. That's the key to a catalogue pose. It's that, oh, hello, what's that? That's my yacht. <laughs> over there is my yacht. That's the pose that I imagine that they're doing. And it doesn't matter whether they're modelling underwear, yeah. watches or bathroom equipment. It's always, that's my yacht. And then if they're waving, I'm waving at my wife on my yacht. <laughs> 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 Darling, you're standing on my yacht. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? That's my favourite pose as well sometimes for photographs. I like to look into the distance. What's your favourite photograph pose? Oh, it's definitely a mouth open as if, if I'm caught in the midst of laughing. Oh, OK. I do a fake, ha! Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. I've got a cheesy grin. I've got a chin stroke where I look mm -hmm. confused. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about it. Then I've got a point at my wife on the yacht. And uh, I think that's it. All I've, that's all I've got in my locker. Three. Mm. <laughs> my grandma just had one setting, which was just before the photograph was taken, she'd lick her lips a bit like a snake. <laughs> and, she'd go, and then and then bare <laughs> and then bare her teeth. Her fangs. Yeah, her fangs, and do this really fake smile. Oh. And it was the same in every photograph, except she was really funny and always, <laughs> always, you know, looked good in the photographs. But she had when you went into photograph mode, she she just slipped into this routine. <laughs> And ding. My dad does the uh, my dad does the dead eyed smile. Oh, does he? Yeah, N like no mirth whatsoever behind the eyes, but it kind of forces his mouth up into a grimace, a kind of rictus <laughs> grin. <laughs> 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 but there's nothing behind the eyes at all. Dead behind the eyes. <laughs> I don't like smiling. <laughs> That's his line. All right, now uh, we've got some sparrow and the workshop coming your way. That's good. Yeah. Okay. This is snakes in the grass. Sparrow in the workshop, snakes in the grass. We were trying to figure out what that sounded like. Sonic Youth, I think you're right. Something... I think it's got a sort of sound of Sonic Youth, but without the performance. It's right. got the same shape as one. Ah, mm. That's what I'm saying to you. It's Kim, Go Kim Gordon shaped. They pop up in Gossip Girl, you know. Who do? Uh, Sonic Youth. Really? Yeah. What, physically? Yeah, they do a little cameo in there in an incredibly cheesy scene. What, as themselves? As themselves, playing for, like, th there's a kind of rock dad character in there. Who oh, lives, yes. He lives in a loft apartment, and his son uh, reads Noam Chomsky, so they're groovy. 
Oh, and that's he, groovy. And he used to be in a band. I wish I could remember the name of the band. Someone can, t- someone can email in the name of the dad's band in Gossip Girl. But they have a party or a, some kind of anniversary party or something like that, or engagement party. I'm not sure. And Sonic Youth turn up. <laughs> and they're playing Amazing. there in the loft with lots of fairy lights around them. While, um, and it's not supposed to be ironic or anything. No, it's supposed to be an indication of how groovy and well connected they are. I think. Okay. Uh, and Kim Gordon does a little dedication at the beginning, and they all look about 150 years old. Oh dear! <laughs> and they're all sitting there on their stools. I still love them. Yeah, they're great. Sure, I'm not putting them down. Obviously, I know. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> now it's time to stand the squadron down before the news. So let's have the jingle. Your work is done. You've earned yourself a nice warm bath and maybe a nice little bun. <laughs> Thank you very much, Squadron. You may stand down. Thank you for all your responses. They were fantastic. This is the Adam and Joe program here with Garth Jennings standing in for Joe. It's 10.30 and time for the news. That's Daft Punk with Daft Punk. Hey, listeners, how you doing? Uh, this is Six Music. I'm Adam Buxton, and this is... Garth Jennings. Yeah. That Good. wasn't too bad, was it? That was great, man. I'll try and get a bit hotter on the back of your announcements. I'm, you know, so you can say, I'm Adam Buxton, I'll come in with, and I'm Garth Jennings. I wouldn't worry about it. Sometimes, really? you know, Joe Scornballs just doesn't bother. Okay, well... I'll I- say, hey, Adam Buxton here. Anyway, so this week on Text and then he just carries on to the next thing. Speaking of Text Nation, we're going to be doing Retro Text the Nation, talking about last week's subject, which was new ideas for kind of buddy cooking shows. That'll be coming up shortly. Oh, I, got few, I wrote a few down. Yeah, well, we'll have that after a bit of my morning jacket. But first, I wanted to ask you, now you're someone who stays in hotels on a fairly regular basis, aren't you? Because Garth, for those of you who don't know, is a film director. I am a film director. Uh, Your last project was Son of Rambo. Yep. And you are currently working on your next project. And you've been in Cannes. You were in Cannes last week trying to raise finances, right? Yeah, we were out there. It was the different side of Cannes because you've got the side you hear about, which is all the films being shown. Yeah. And Lars von Trier going a bit nuts. Sure. Uh, but then the other side of it is, is the sort of corporate side where everyone's trying to raise fin- finances for their films or sell their films. And I was part of that market bit. Doing deals on napkins and Blimey, things like that. It was. I've never really done it properly before. And um, it was full on. It's absolutely bonkers. Full on fun? Uh, not fun. Uh, <laughs> well, no, getting your film financed is exciting. Yeah. Um, and it, I think it's going all right. But um, it's pretty intense. You, you're, you're, there's just hundreds of people just swapping tables and having meetings. And it's, it's like speed dating. Yeah. It's like speed dating, but trying to get your film financed. Right. In the heat. It's about a guy whose head is replaced by a football. <laughs> and he... And the, and the football next... <laughs> That kind of it's thing. a bit like that. It's really funny. Oh, we don't want funny. Oh, you want dark? Yeah, no, it's quite dark. It's that you can go that route if you want. But actually, we were really lucky. We met very, very, very nice people who seemed to really enjoy what we were talking about. Yeah. Is Jennifer Aniston in it? No. Oh, wow. Well, that's oh. where you're going wrong, man. Yeah, that's probably what slowed us down. But you were asking about hotels, weren't you? Yes, I was asking about hotels and particularly receptionist patter. Like, yes. I, I've been doing a few shows. Uh, I do this show called Bug, and we went to Manchester this week, and uh, we've been travelling around the country a little bit with the show. So I've been staying in more hotels than normal, and I've realised that modern receptionists have got a lot more patter than I think they used to, and they fire it off sometimes in a fairly non-committal way, and they, th- like they're not even listening to their own patter. No. Uh, but they've just had all the little phrases, and while they're doing their logging in, you know, to fill in the awkward silences, I guess the theory is, they fire off these inane questions at you, and you're not quite sure, and they're the kind of questions that a friend would ask you, but th- yeah. they're being fired at you by someone who clearly doesn't care about the answers, so you're not sure if you should respond sincerely or just, you know, fob them off, but it, f- it feels a bit weird fobbing them off. So let's see how you respond to my receptionist patter. Oh, right, okay. Oh, okay, Mr. Jennings, let's just uh, put your details in here. How's your weekend, Mr. Jennings? Oh, it's fine. Mm, okay, are you going to have a chance to relax while you stay with us, Mr. Jennings? Yeah, I hope to relax. Are yes. you having a pleasant trip today? Y- yes. Have you come far today, Mr. Jennings? Uh, not that far, no. Okay, okay. It's, it's quite easy. Would you like me to book your table for dinner tonight, Mr. Jennings? Um, maybe, yes. Okay, you're having a relaxing trip so far, Mr. Jennings? Yes, yes. yeah, very relaxing. You have far to go today. <laughs> 
<laughs> had to go today, Mr. Jennings. No, no not far. No. Do you have a relaxing weekend, Mr. Jennings? <laughs> Stop! It's okay. torture. Okay. Is there anything I can get you today? Um, Would you like a paper? Uh, no. Would you I like don't. a paper tomorrow morning? No. I don't Would you like need. a wake-up call, Mr. Jennings? No, I don't need. Would you like a, a paper? I don't need a paper. Would you like a table for dinner? Actually, no. I'll you go have out. A relaxing day. Yes, I am. Do you have far to go today. I don't have far. No. You have a chance to wander around today. No, I'm going to. Chance to wander around today. I think I might go out. Okay. Yes. How was your weekend, Mr. Jennings? <laughs> you have the chance to relax today? Stop, please. Can I go to my room? <laughs> yes, okay. It's on the very top floor. It's the size of a shoebox. <laughs> and it looks out over an air conditioning unit through a frosted window that you can't open. <laughs> Enjoy your stay, Mr. Jennings. If there's anything else I can do for you, please let me know. Bye. <laughs> I had the same thing once. There was this, what, there was this one hotel we stayed in that had a had a sort of um, a, a special line that everyone in the building had to say to you, mm -hmm. whether they were cleaning your room or checking you in. I won't say the name of the hotel, so I'll just say the hotel. Yeah. But it, they would say, good morning, Mr. Jennings. How can I enhance your hotel experience? Shut up. I'm not joking you. Shut up. You Shut it. Shut up. <laughs> Stop. Shut it. Well, because you'd wake up in the morning very early because you were jet lagged and you'd go, you'd ring out for a cup of coffee. You're not too well. You'd go, hello, can I have a cup of coffee? Yeah, sure. And how can I enhance your hotel experience? Just, just bring me the coffee. What? Yeah, seriously. And then the cleaner came in and said, good morning. How can I enhance your hotel experience? You can clean my tiny shoebox. <laughs> <laughs> lunatic. <laughs> nonsense, nonsense, nonsense! <laughs> <laughs> Here's my morning jacket. This is holding on to black metal. Well, that's very good, isn't it? My morning jacket with holding on to black metal available as a download now and <laughs> physically on the 13th of June. That's the first single from their new album, Circuital, which is out on the 6th of June. My morning jacket. Okay, I think we should get into Retro Text the Nation now. Let's have the jingle, James. I like to listen to Adam and Joe, but I listen to the podcast, not the live show. I used to feel acute frustration Because I couldn't join in with Text the Nation But now my troubles have disappeared Because Retro Text the Nation's here And now my letter might be read out Instead, instead of thrown in the bin and forgotten about Yeah, some people's favourite jingle from the show there. A lot of people like that <laughs> jingle that Joe did. The one jingle that Joe ever made. I think he made, like, maybe one other for a Glastonbury show that we did. Apart from that, that's the only one that he's ever done, and everyone thinks it's really great. Me too. It's the best one. It's the best jingle, isn't it? The other day, and I think my wife understands how I feel about, you know, Joe and my ongoing competitive world with him <laughs> let's she, work we, it out she here said on the radio we were on we were in, on a car journey and gratifyingly she suggested that we listen to one of our podcasts because she doesn't get a chance to listen to the show live right she's mum force so uh, were you quite pleased about that yeah yeah i was happy about it i, I never miss an opportunity to force the podcast on people <laughs> so she said let's listen to the show yeah i was like great yeah come on come on kids pay attention uh, so we stick the podcast on. When Retro Texanation comes on, she starts singing along with Scornballs as flipping jingle. Yeah. She's not singing along with Travelling Tales or, or you know, Pop Appropriation or Made Up Jokes. You want to have a word, Adam? I want to listen to Adam and Joe. And then later on, she starts singing like just off the top of her head. Like it's a great song. <laughs> oh, I've got that great song stuck in my... And then, and then, Adam and Joe. Retro Texanation. Shut up! <laughs> What are you doing, woman? <laughs> Drive the car! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. That's, that is actually how he speaks to his wife. But other people, weird. I think, have been listening to this jingle as well, right? There was a clip sent in, and I'm so sorry, but I think I've lost the name of the lady who sent in this clip. Well, I might try and find it later on in the show, but you know who you are, lady. Thanks. It was really nice. She sent in this <laughs> clip of Norman Smith, I think, probably on the Today programme on Radio 4. Uh, here he is in action. You have to say, the whole NHS reform package appears to be on the cusp of getting chucked in the bin and forgotten about. Chucked in the bin and forgotten about. That's true. I mean, I don't know if we owned that phrase. I don't know if Joe coined that phrase. <laughs> but uh, there's a lot. You know what? He'd probably just been listening to the podcast and it had soaked into his subconscious. Sure. And he went, for, he went for bin and not trash. But listen, do you realise the power of your podcast if that's what you can do with it? 
You could say anything. You could change the world. Yeah, we can f- we can feed messages direct into the minds of our leaders via jingles. Nonsense! 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, retro text the nation uh, is cooking shows, new cooking shows. Oh, Last yeah, week, yeah. if you remember, we were talking about the. Shows like Two Greedy Italians, Two Fat Ladies, Hairy Bikers. I came up with uh, Skin Bird and Yum Yums, <laughs> Tubby nice. and the Feeder. Have you got any I got, ideas? I got a couple. I got uh, Cannibal Run. Cannibal Run. Yeah, uh, it's like, uh, you know, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Yeah. But you drop the people into the jungle and there are cannibals in the jungle and they've got to run from the cannibals yeah. and uh, and then the slow ones get eaten i like it and that that the, you they they're, they're cooked in a different way each week well that's nice i you know I'm, because you wouldn't want to do it the same thing with a big pot every sure. week because no. we've all seen that exactly but that, yeah they come up with clever ways and then maybe the loser of a test has to then eat the other contestant yeah you know that's not too bad is it they already eat pretty nasty things on that show so they might as well eat each other what if you just ate chefs this week we're serving up heston blumenthal's delicious <laughs> giant head yeah, he's been frozen in carbonite. Mm. Yeah, um, that, that add some asparagus to Ainsley there. Mm, <laughs> it would be a very short show, wouldn't it? Yeah. At the end of it, it was what one, about se- if, one season only. What about if you just drop them in the jungle? So it's like I'm a celebrity, but they just have to eat each other. You don't give them any food at all. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, that could work, but I like the running man aspect to it. Yeah, I like the thrill of the chase through mm-hmm. the jungle. Well, make Ant and Deck eat them. Yes, maybe they, well, they could judge it, you know, in very well, the same way those two guys on MasterChef come in and go, mmm, that's a bit yeah. tart. They go, oh, right. you know, if you were going to cook uh, Ainsley Harriet yeah. that way, you should have really added more sauce. Mm, Adamant's shins are a bit chewy. Yeah, you should have cooked them longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do like the idea of them eating each other, though, because it could be like a bush tucker trial. Well, exactly. Get, really, stop torturing the insects and the indigenous wildlife mm-hmm. of the Australian jungle and make them eat each other. Yeah. I think that's a fun idea, Garth. I'm commissioning that. Here is an idea from Gwilym Jones. He's a mailman. Uh, he says, how about Sushi Sous Chef? Lawley and Barker have a cook-off to decide who will be the top sous chef in a new sushi restaurant. Spin-off concept number one. Sue Sushi the... <laughs> I can't do <laughs> Sue Sue the Sushi Sous Chef. <laughs> this follows the legal battle between Lawley and a disgruntled customer who gets food poisoning at said restaurant. Spin-off concept number two. Same concept, but with Barker's rival restaurant. Uh, and it'll be called Sue Sue the Sushi Sue... Oh. Sue Sue the Sushi Sue Chef Sue 2. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hit. Thank you very much, Gwilym Jones. I'm commissioning that immediately. I found one, but I forgot the name of the person, which was called... And the show was called Bigger Fish to Fry. And basically, each week, Stephen Fry cooks a progressively bigger fish. I think that's a great idea. That's an excellent idea. You know, he'd start by reeling in a, you know, an anchovy. Mm-hmm. And then by the end of it, he's pulling in a humpback whale and working out <laughs> how, to, how to divvy it up. Very good idea. Yeah, yeah I'm commissioning that too. Thank you. Uh, to the anonymous person responsible for that one. Here's one from Zach Arundel. Speaking of Heston Blumenthal, he says, uh, Dear Adsy Baby and Joss Stick, uh, I didn't realise that he would be filling in this week, Garth. Sorry about yeah, that. Very it's disrespectful. Yeah. He says, my show is called Heston's Trick of the Pie. Trick of the Pie. Trick of the Eye. Yeah. Yeah. Heston Blumenthal takes well-worn recipes and injects new life into them by changing one word of the recipe with a superficially similar word, a homonym, ideally. It's sort of like a pun thing. For example, he says, mince cobbler becomes mints cobbler. So instead of mints, mints, M-I-N-T-S, a kilo of Fox's Glacier mints covered in scones. Pea and ham soup, urine and ham. Oh, dear. Steak tartare, uh, steak covered with dental plaque. Oh, that's <laughs> revolt. <laughs> he says loads more can be done, obviously. Perhaps a daily show for that runs for years. Um, perhaps a daily show like that runs for years, like this morning, he says, hopefully. Um, after the dish is made, the celebs come and buy and try it. Lots of amazed voices and applauding at the food. Crucially, the celebs are told what's on the menu by voice alone, so the big surprise isn't ruined when they read Mint's Cobbler, for example. Love the show. Thanks, guys. Zach Arundel. Thank you very much, Zach. I'm commissioning that because I like the idea of steak tartare. 
Uh, <laughs> lovely bit of Nasa lit the lale bit of beef We a nice little bit of pluck from the teeth on the nice spread it all over the teeth and the <laughs> and a corn of a crusty shell on the beef and that's nice at the top food the beef a lot a lot nice little beef on the teeth the pluck on the top on it in it and you can't floss the beef on that noise thank you. <laughs> Here's central offices. This is the office from Brazil. Central services. Ah, lovely. Now, of course, that was... Uh, <laughs> but all... Now, of course, that was Garth's free play there. You just walked right in there and just <laughs> shot it off. I'm so excited with the biff that <laughs> I just launched straight into it. All I do, I, I've got a computer screen here, listeners, that tells me what the next song is coming up. And so sometimes I just see a name of a band or whatever, and, and I think, well, I've never heard them. But uh, it's very exciting. You know, lots of new bands here on Six Music. So I thought, oh, who's this new band? Central Services. Oh, the track's called The Office from Brazil. Just fire into that and uh, it'll be great. But it was Garth's replay there. You uh, totally swept it away. Sorry, mate. But it was nice to hear it. Thank you for letting me play it. That's a wonderful film, though, isn't it? I mean, that... Do you know, I haven't actually watched it for years and it's years. It's good, man. It Does stands it up? up really well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because I have such fond memories of it. And that track in particular is amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's great, isn't it? That whole business. When, when De Niro turns up there, the service engineer... Yeah. Ah, uh, it's it's so wonderful. And even the incredibly bleak ending sort of makes sense. Yeah, but I, I just remember seeing things like, um, as you know, when he's got, he's pulling that woman's face and it's all stretching. Mm. Things like that. I remember thinking, God, I can't believe you can do this in a film. Yeah, that's Up to right. that point, I hadn't seen anything like it. Yeah, completely. Amazing. Uh, okay, now let's have a little trail here. What have we got? Oh, this is exciting. Come on, James, fire it up. Oh, man, that's a smash, isn't it? I love that song. It's really amazing. I remember when it came out, I felt... I mean, like, I in no way was the kind of person that was being described in that song, but I felt like it was he was communicating directly with me and my generation. I remember at the Brits, he went flying up on some wires at the end and didn't come down. Oh, yeah. That was good. <laughs> that was... Well, you, you know, to never, never come down never. and he floated up into, the, up into the scenery. Wow. That wasn't the same Brits that he got in Jackson trouble, was it? I don't know. I can't remember. I have been. It was all around that time, wasn't it? Mm. Hey, listeners, how you doing? Welcome to the show. This is uh, Adam Buxton here, joined by... I'm Garth Jennings. Hello. Yeah. I'm standing in for Joe while he's away in Los Angeles. In Los Angeles. And what an exciting weekend it is, folks, because, of course, tomorrow evening on BBC One at 11.55pm, you will be able to hear Pierce Bronholm in action on the film Taffin, where Bronholm plays a... Uh, debt collector or something like that or uh, he gets into some trouble with a local community who want to build an oil refinery and Bronholm is trying to stop them from doing so and he's conflicted he's got issues he's not entirely good he's he's partly very angry and of course in one wonderful scene he gets in a little argument with his girlfriend there mate and uh, she says, as long as I'm... Uh, he says, it's none of your business anyway. And she says, as long as I'm living here, it is. To which Bronholm replies... Then maybe you shouldn't be living here! But someone sent in a fantastically extended version <laughs> of that little exhortation. Matt Power in Greenwich. Thank you very much for this. And I'm suggesting, listeners, that maybe you somehow make a recording of this and then play it out the window after well i your... think when you're watching the show yeah. tomorrow night y if any of you've seen the net the film network you'll understand that thing of uh, people you know rising up out of their seats leaning out of the window and saying i'm mad as hell and i'm not going to take it anymore well i think we should do a taff inversion so when that line comes on the film tomorrow night just lean out of your window and shout the line you know well this line where is it then maybe you shouldn't be living here <laughs> 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 just do it thanks to matt power and greenwich for that oh. very good here's another message as well from someone else talking about another um bit on the show <laughs> and oh have i written the guy's name down here i'm not sure if i have oh no here we go rear admiral scott black squadron app division and he says uh hi adam and joe i've created uh, no he says dear mr buxton and master jennings i've created a nonsense button app for android phones it is now live on the android marketplace if you can plug it in somehow nonsense mania or he calls it 
Nonsnia, I don't think that's a good name for it. <laughs> Nonsnia is no good. I think what you mean is nonsania. Uh, he says th- this could sweep the nation. I've already had over one downloads. <laughs> and the news is spreading fast. Yeah. So when you mean over one download, do you mean two? I think what he means is he's had one download, in which case over one download would be exaggerating the uh, situation. He says, it's free. Check out the YouTube video for a taster and the awesome power of the buck button. I don't know if that's what he's actually calling the app there. Thanks very much, Rear Admiral Scott. He says, P.S., I'm also working on a Stephen app now, too. Um, but that's, that's old. We man. should promote that guy in the Black Squadron, give him some sort of commander position mm. do you know what i mean he shouldn't just be down there in the ranks with the others he's sure. shown excellence well yeah i mean he's gone out and he's created a nonsense button for the phone which everybody needs nonsense 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 we've got song wars coming up very soon ladies and gentlemen maybe not immediately after this track from the arcade fire but within the next 10 minutes or so so stay tuned for that but this is the suburbs this is a great track isn't it this is as good as it gets here we go arcade fire that's a smash, isn't it? Arcade Fire with the suburbs. And we were playing Pulp before that, sorted for ease and whiz, of course. And we forgot to say that, uh, you know, with Pulp reforming, I don't know if they ever split up, but anyway, they are touring with the original lineup, isn't it? I think. And Jarvis, uh, whose show, of course, is on Six Music at what time is it? At four o'clock. Um, tomorrow. yeah, tomorrow. And Jarvis is going to be joining Steve Lamack for an exclusive interview this coming Friday, talking about the upcoming tour. So listen out for that. That'll be very good. Now I've got a free play for you, Garth. This popped up on my uh, MP3 player this week. And I forgot how much I loved it when it came out. But it is more or less nonsense. Nonsense, nonsense, nonsense! (laughs) What is it? It's the police. Oh, okay. Uh, and were you a fan of the police? Yeah, very much so. My mum was always into the police, so I got into them via my mum. You know who loves the police is Ed O'Brien from Radiohead. Right. He is obsessed with the police. He yeah. will not have a bad word said against them. And well, nine- what, what would you say against them? Uh, well, that they are occasionally a tiny bit rubs. Okay. And uh, the <laughs> track I'm going to play... He's sing- probably listening now, fuming. He's probably punching <laughs> his fist like... They're good. I mean, surely even Ed would have to admit that sometimes they stray too far into the smelly world of stink. (laughs) Um, Synchronicity 2. You remember that track? Uh, From 1983, from the album Synchronicity. I don't know how it goes. And the video was um, police. uh, It's like Sting. It was a bit like the Duran Duran video. Oh, was he in loads of candles? Uh, He was. uh, I feel like he was attached to another windmill as well or something. He He was scaling a big kind of apocalyptic thing he had wind blowing in his hair and wow. there was explosions going off it was very much like much like the wild boys video for Duran Well, they had Duran. a huge set left after that so they might as well reuse it I yeah, guess. yeah i guess so but the the song is a kind of a story song it's in three acts Good. and it's all about it's juxtaposing a story about a man living a kind of boring suburban family life going into work with a creature crawling from uh Loch Ness. Oh, that? somewhere. Yeah, you know, I know how that one goes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so you've got lyrics like another suburban family morning. Yeah. <laughs> Grandmother screaming at the wall. Let's not forget that Stung was actually an English teacher at one point as well. We have to shout above the din of our Rice Krispies. He doesn't say that. Yes. We can't hear anything at all. Mother chants a litany of boredom and frustration. Excuse me, Mr. Stung. Um, in your poem here, Synchronicity 2, <laughs> what, what does it mean when you talk about... Uh, where's the other great line? Oh, yes, yes. Another working day has ended. Only the rush hour hell to face. Packed like lemmings into shiny metal boxes. Contestants in a suicidal race. I remember how he sings that. Shiny metal boxes. Shiny metal boxes. Yeah. I mean, I'm being, you know, I haven't written any uh, really good songs recently, as you will find out after this next link. <laughs> so it's a bit rich coming from Dr. Buckles. And still, I love the song. It's Synchronicity 2. Here's the police. Every single meeting with his so-called superiors is a humiliating kick in the crotch. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Stung, what did you mean by... Anyway, 
That was The Police, of course, with Synchronicity 2. And this is the Adam and Joe programme here with Adam Buxton and Garth Jennings. For Hello. The yeah, Joe. I'm the stand-in guy. You know. Hey, stand-in guy. It's nice to be the stand-in guy. Yeah. I couldn't deal with the pressure on a weekly basis. No, I'm sure you how couldn't. you guys cope with I'm it. I'm sure you couldn't deal with the shouting. <laughs> the shouting is a bit much. I'm going to have to move to a new studio. The shouting, the nonsense, and the constant references to the Netherlands. Yeah. Okay. I think it's Song Wars time, folks. Oh, boy. I mean, if you're not a fan of shouting and stupidity, then probably best to do a bit of gardening for five minutes <laughs> uh, because there's going to be this is going to be difficult it's all right a dirty let's, war let's have the jingle it's time for song wars the war of the songs a couple of tunes by a couple of prongs which will you vote for which one is the best we're putting our songs to the listener test so check it out that's a jingle that doesn't get heard very often anymore at the big british castle because it's hard to do these songs you know we've got busy lives we've all got busy lives right it is tricky uh, you're busy i'm busy we're all busy and to create a song if that's not really your job you know if if you are not a songwriter a singer songwriter like stung like stung who can just knock off a song on his mandolin between uh, yoga sessions yeah then it's very hard <laughs> You know, uh, so our theme this week was toys and games. How did yeah. you feel about that theme? Well, when you first said it, I thought, oh, that's a funny subject. There'll be, there will bound to be uh, loads of ideas I was there. thinking it'd be good because we're both parents. Yeah. We have, uh, you yeah, know, but, hundreds of children. Yeah, between us, there's a good few hundred there. But no, I, um, I really struggled. Mm. But then um, found something towards the end of this week. So hopefully it'll be a fair fair battle and what what theme did you go for in the end what was the subject of your song oh i took a game i took twister uh-huh you know i don't know why it just sort of felt like the one that i could relate to the most find the most material in <laughs> okay. all right well you can tell us a little bit more about the style and whatever just before we hear it we're going to flip a coin in a second i should say now that you can hear both these songs again that we're about to play on our blog which is bbc.co.uk slash blogs slash adam and joe or you can listen to them in the podcast which of course will be available from around 6 p.m today uh then you can vote for your favorite song if you want to get involved via the blog or our usual email address which is adam and joe dot six music at bbc.co.uk emails only for this and the best thing to do to make it simple you don't have to include any message in the email all you have to do is in the header just call it uh just say you're either uh, song wars i vote for adam or song wars i vote for garth that would be the easiest thing wouldn't it vote for garth, vote, garth. vote adam or vote garth there you go that's the vote that's the simplest garth. way as Sorry, your header doing some that. subliminal no, stuff on. no i was just i was just you can't go to, subliminal i was on, just moving something subliminal around subliminal yeah. on their asses <laughs> um you've got until 11 p.m on friday the 22nd of may to cast your vote full terms and conditions can be found on our website and the winning song will be announced on the show next week saturday 28th of may how's the computer doing that <laughs> uh so yeah just uh, vote adam or vote garth right now let's flip a coin flip see it, baby who goes first all right nice catch what are you going for i'll go for heads heads it's tails mate you're up i'm up first oh lordy now i'm not exaggerating this has been the the toughest one like i started with a nice little piece of reggae music that i put together mm. it's a nice track but then i started crooning over it and it sounded, that sounds like sting again a bit of stung yeah it was some light reggae yeah but it sounded a little bit too lame so i thought i've got to toughen this up a bit basically the song is about my children playing video games right and do you remember years ago i spoke about the fact that uh, natty as he was then three years old saying oh you're going down pom pom yeah when like <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. when he's playing video games with my son frank and they would taunt each other oh you want to come to a party pom pom you better come because it's gonna be a poo poo party <laughs> <laughs> he was at that phase where everything's like poo poo and poo poo head and all that stuff so i kind of constructed this song around around that but i did it in a in a sort of jamaican dance hall style wow so this may be offensive to a lot of people okay <laughs> good work <laughs> but it's kind of, but but the production got away from me and it's all it's a bit like Don't pirate worry. radio style as well it's all distorted and you might not be able to hear what i'm actually saying so that's the other thing if you want to go to the blog adam and joe uh, no bbc.co.uk slash blogs slash adam and joe the lyrics for both our songs are there so if you want to see what we're actually saying in the songs then go and check them out but this is called party pom pom here we go 
my friend Frederick said, come round. I said, yes, we can play a bit of Wii, we can play DS, we can play Super Mario Galaxy 2, but I'll tell you right now that I'm better than you. I know this is your house where you live with mom and dad, I know you want to win, and that is very sad, cause I got the tricks, bro, I got the skill, I've been training pretty hard, and I'm ready to kill. I'm a cold-blooded plumber, I'm a nonchalant king, when you begin to lose, I begin to sing, and here is the thing, the thing that I sing, and you feel the thing from the thing that I sing. Would you like to come to a party, pom pom? Would you like to be my guest? It's gonna be a poo poo party, pom pom. A poo poo party is the best. You don't need to bring no presents. There ain't gonna be no cake. Just bring a wee and you better guarantee that you don't make no mistake. Are you gonna come to my party, pom pom? Are you gonna be my guest? It's gonna be a poo poo party, pom pom. A poo poo party is the best. How you enjoy it? Humiliation. Would you like some more on your daddy's PlayStation? Hold up a second, cause your mommy's coming in. Flip the level and wait for the speech to begin. What you doing inside? So I apologise to anyone that offended. I don't think you should <laughs> apologise for that. That was marvellous. Yeah. That was a master... St- I am going to go out there and say that was one of the best you've ever done. <laughs> Thank you very much. I mean, you know, because uh, we talked about doing pirate radio jingles. Yeah, I've made some this oh, week. Good. We'll play those a bit later yeah, on. Yeah. But Garth, ages ago when he came on the show pointed out that thing that happens when you're listening to the radio and suddenly the pirate uh, stations drift into your frequency and you suddenly get interruptions. Like, People kind of talk like this over massive beats. I love that when you're listening to something very mild and calm and then some really yeah. inappropriate thing comes in. Yeah, we're, we're shouting out to me, big brand. You know, <laughs> just, just right in the middle of, you know, Shania Twain or yeah. something. <laughs> so I think that was partly responsible for my approach to that song. Oh, anyway. That was a master stroke. Time for yours now, Garth. What's yours called? Uh, mine's just called Twister. Mm-hmm. Um, that's pretty much all I can say about it. Uh, I just, I did my best. Here we go. This is Twister. Yeah. Gonna play a little game. Roll them out. Spin the wheel. Yeah. We play a Twister. Take your shoes off unless you want a blister. We break a sweat, but we never break our wrist. You can bring your friend, but please don't bring your sister. Yeah, we play a twister. Even MPs play it in Westminster. If you's a young and or if you is a spinster, we can all have a little game of twister. Spin the wheel, man. Right foot blue and left hand green. I'm like a human crab, baby. I'm a twister machine. Left hand yellow and right foot red. Now my booty is getting a bit close to your head. Right foot green and left hand blue. My legs are in a knot I can never undo. Left hand red and right foot yellow. Now you see I am a bendy fellow. When it comes to playing twister, I'm a natural. And I think it really helps that I'm not that tall. If I slip when I'm tied up like a pretzel, you'll see the very definition of a prat fool. Now it's clear to me you never had a wash burst, cause your armpits is smelling like a brat burst, and your feet is smelling even more worse. Any minute I'll be living in a black hearse. Yeah, we play in Twister. Take your shoes off unless you want a blister. We break a sweat, but we never break our wrist. You can bring your friend, but please don't bring your sister. She's just well annoying. Yeah, we play in Twister. Even MPs play it in Westminster. If you said young, I know if you is a spinster. We can all have a little game of Twister. Oh! oh.
There you go. That's Twister. <laughs> that's great by Garth Jennings. Yeah, we took similar approaches. Yeah, isn't that weird? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Collective consciousness. Donkeys seldom differ. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> vote for your favourite uh, song there, or, or your least worst song, if you prefer. Just put Vote Adam or Vote Garth as the header of your email to music at bbc.co.uk. And you can do that right throughout the week, whether you've listened to the podcast or you're doing Listen Again. Right now, some real music. This is Franz Ferdinand with No You Go. Pixies. With Here Comes Your Man, Adam and Joe program here on BBC Six Music with uh, my good friend and your good friend Garth Jennings standing in for Joe, who's in America at the moment doing his daily deals. But right now, I think it's time we had some travelling tales. Travelling tales, travelling tales, tales of travelling on the train or an automobile or an aeroplane. I want to know what your travelling tales. All aboard the Skylark! <laughs> and do you know what that's from at the end there? Isn't that... Captain Pugwash or something? No, it's Noah and Nelly. Oh, Noah and Nelly, yeah. Yeah. Well done. That was, I think, the same studio, the animation studio that used to do Rhubarb and Custard. And it may even have been, um, what's his name, the same bloke that did the Rhubarb and Custard narration that did Noah and Nelly. I'm not sure. People can correct me if I'm wrong. Incidentally, we were talking about Gossip Girl, the name of the band that the uh, lame rock dad in Gossip Girl has they're called Lincoln Hawk, not Lincoln Park. You no. see, but Lincoln Hawk. I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> Lincoln Hawk. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, traveling tales. Now we've been asking you to send in any stories you have of things that have happened to you whilst you're traveling. A bit later on in the show, we're going to play some more announcements and you know conductor messages that people have been sending in. Conductor messages is that the right way of doing it? Anyway, here's a message though from Michael Kelly. He says, uh, dear Frodo and Gandalf, referring to me and Joe there, I'm not sure I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> About 30 years ago, when I was a young child, I was traveling from Dublin to Galway on the train. I'd just been treated to an ice lolly, and like a good little boy, I was looking for somewhere to put the wrapper. Quite right. I asked the conductor, and he very helpfully took it from me, opened a window, and said, here's a bin that never gets full. And threw it out. <laughs> <laughs> I've often thought the Irish tourist board could use that as a slogan. <laughs> Ireland, a bin that never gets full. <laughs> <laughs> That's from Michael Kelly. <laughs> what the heck is that? That's fantastic. <laughs> what a lovely sales pitch. <laughs> yeah. Ireland, the bin oh, that never gets the full. The bin that never gets full. What are you doing looking for a bin? <laughs> Look, there's a window right here. <laughs> Just pop it out the window. <laughs> What are you doing wasting your time We're looking for a bin there? Thanks, Michael Kelly. Uh, now, another thing that people have been uh, sending in messages about... There was a little pause there. I like that. You were breathing. Yeah. Building up to something there. <laughs> I wondered if I should feel. I just got emotional. <laughs> 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 it is the whole business of trying to keep the seat next to you free when you're sitting, uh, particularly yeah. on a train. Yeah. And it's amazing. As soon as people get on a train, I've been really thinking about this. They get very selfish and protective over their little space. Yeah. I say they, I mean, I include myself very much in this. Right. You know, I like to, I think it's, it's the fact that a train journey can be so pleasurable, maybe the most pleasurable way of traveling, you know, as far as I'm concerned. And if you're having a relaxing journey, if it's not too busy, nothing beats a train journey, I reckon. So the, 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 um, you know, uh, yearn to yearn. Are you all right? The over desire. There? Do you want me to step in? The word desire. Is out what I was <laughs> the desire to keep your personal space free is, yeah. is considerable. So people have got lots of different techniques for doing that. Here is one from Pip Haylett. He's a man. He's been called Pip since uh, he was, he read great expectations at school when he was 14. Very good, Pip. Uh, he says, the other day, I spotted a very good trick which might prove useful. I had booked my seat via a well-known uh, pre-booking type of site on the internet for trains, also via blah, 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 other sites. Long and convoluted process, but it comes with a reserved seat by default. So imagine my happiness when on finding my reserved seat on the window aisle on the next... Um, the next one to it. Sorry, Garth. My brain occasionally... We're just going to wheel him out, folks. Malfunctions. Just push him outside. 
Okay, thank you. I know where he's going with this story. Right, so he basically... <laughs> He, he sits there and he is smugly in the non-reserved seat. Of course. Right? So you get your reserved seat and then you sit in the one next to it, which is non-reserved, knowing that that reserved seat is going to stay free for the rest of the journey. Good tactic, Pip. Well, because the other one, of course, is the, you know, falling asleep and looking like you're a bit mad. Yeah, we've had that. We've I mean, had that's, that, That's right? a classic one. That's an absolute smash. Yeah, I had a friend who, uh, her, her foot... Uh, on a tr- um, on a holiday, and on the way back, she thought, oh, "I better take some crutches just in case my foot hurts a bit." As soon as anyone saw the crutches, she was given sort of two seats extra and loads of loads of space, and first off the plane and everything. She'd only hurt her foot a little bit. Mm. Yeah, it just shows you, isn't it? She's lucky. That take she... some crutches exactly. next time you go on a plane. Get yourself a nice big space. Unless you bump into Stung, and he'd give you a humiliating kick in the crutch. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> That is a reference to the song Synchronicity 2. I'm not saying that police uh, members, and Stung in particular, go around kicking the crutches out from people. I don't believe they do. Uh, here's a message now from Steve Curran. He is Stephen. Okay. He's, he's the original Stephen. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Adam. Hi, Garth. Last week's email from the woman who acted as if, as if she was pregnant to save someone's feelings on public transport reminded me of a similar piece of public pretending. Uh, now, did you hear that thing last week, Garth? I didn't. It was a lady who got onto a bus and someone offered her a seat because they thought she was pregnant and she wasn't. Oh, no. <laughs> she was just a That's little... That's awful. She just had a little belly there. Yeah. Uh, so what the lady did was... Uh, to save the person's feelings, she acted as if she were pregnant. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Only in England would somebody go through with that. <laughs> she stuck her tummy out. She was rubbing her belly and oh, patting it and stuff, oh and then no. holding her back. Ooh, oh I've, no! Oh, I've such a little back pain since I've been pregnant, which I am. <laughs> Holy moly! So Steve had a, a, a similar type of thing. He says, as I'm sure you'll know, it's frequently difficult to judge whether a fellow passenger or is preggers or just a little paunchy. So in order to avoid causing offence, either by failing to offer my seat or in a Inadvertently making the person feel fat, I simply stand up and disembark at the next stop. This way, <laughs> the person in question gets the seat, and I'm no longer in danger of upsetting anyone. And then I'll either sneak into the next carriage or wait for the next bus, train, or tube to come along. Bongo! I do the same thing for people who look quite old but not decrepit. Uh, now that I write this down, it looks a little bit mentile. Am I alone in doing this? Always seems like a good idea at the time. You're definitely alone there. That's a bit much, I'd say. You reckon? Actually, yeah. getting off rather than getting off the whole (laughs) vehicle oh no there's someone who is either fat or pregnant yes i'm gonna have to get off (laughs) (laughs) could you imagine it because if that caught on and then everyone would just be getting off trains all the time yeah oh no i can't tell if that's real or and then they'd have to ban people with a little belly or who were pregnant yeah you have to have separate services laid on for the to have a badge for the porky and the pregnant yeah (laughs) i am porky you know there's no baby here that's right Exactly. Little badge system. I just love cakes. You yeah. <laughs> it's okay. You can stay in your seat. I love cakes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you very much for all those messages. Here's Holly Cook right now and that very night. Love it. Talking heads with heaven there. And I was saying to Garth, oh, you've got that album, haven't you? Fear of music. Yeah. Now you do this a lot. You say you've got that, right? And I go, nah. I'm and then surprised. you go, and then you get really cross with me and say, but you've <laughs> got to have it. You can't exist without that album. That's maybe the second best Talking Heads album, I reckon. Okay. Uh, Remain in Light being perhaps the best. So. The well, one with Once in a Lifetime. And you haven't got that one either. Well, I just know all the hits. I'm yeah. a bit of a loser in that respect, but I'm going to catch up this weekend. Get, get Remain in Light. It's just amazing. Amazing. Let's have a jingle and it's time for Text the Nation, I think. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Text the nation time, listeners. And a couple of weeks back, I read out an email from Ed Bailey. He had this to say. I love pink lady apples, but they're so darn expensive. So every lunchtime for about the last year, I go to the self-service aisle of a certain supermarket to pay for my lunch. And when paying for my pink lady apple... I select Cox Apple from the list instead. Beep! I reckon I save about 20p a day, but I'm starting to get a bit twitchy. Now it's gone on for so long, I always try and stand between the staff guy and the screen so he can't actually see I'm ringing in a cheaper apple than the (laughs) one I'm buying. I keep expecting to be seen on an in-store scoundrels list. Love the show, keep up the good work. Thanks, Ed Bailey. So he is sticking it to the man. Right. I mean, I would say 
strictly speaking, that's breaking the law. And I wouldn't encourage that. No, you can't encourage that. But even he, though you can understand it, you can sort of understand it. But that is that's law breaking there, Ed. And I wouldn't like you to get uh, busted or think that that was entirely acceptable. However, I am interested in other ways that people stick it to the man. You know, ways that you sort of you have your little moment of victory and you think, yeah, come on, I'm making things right. I'm living in an unfair world and I'm trying to straighten it out. Yeah, but it was small and slightly pathetic. A little bit pathetic. You know, a bit like apples really yeah what kind of thing do you uh do well we were talking about this a bit earlier and definitely um if i'm traveling in low class mm -hmm. which is normally where i end up traveling in steerage yeah in steerage on a I plane yeah on a plane or, or a train or something i like to use the high class first class facilities sure you do. even if somebody says uh sorry actually <laughs> you're supposed to be back there so, oh sorry i was just using the toilet they are very fascistic about it these yeah, days yeah it used to be that you could wander up there through first class, have a little look at the celebrities sipping their champagne, having their yeah. massages, and, yeah. and use their lavies, which actually were not that different from the economy class. They're much nicer soap, I seem to remember. Nicer soap. They, yes, yeah, sometimes they have little napkins and stuff out there, don't mm -hmm. they? But what they do have is uh, they're easier to use. Sometimes there'll be a queue in economy, right, for the lav. Yeah. But up in first class, it's all nice. Every, no one's really using it. They're too busy getting massages, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and the same same sitting in an economy seat. And then after we took off, there was loads of space in the front, you know, the front section. Yeah. And I said, "Can we just move into that?" And they said, "No, no, no. <laughs> You're <laughs> insane. Get back in your box, Jennings. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny joke you made. Now get back in your tiny seat." <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty much it. And then um, then the lights went down because everyone was going to sleep. And I just walked forward and sat in the front section for the whole way. Slept the whole way. What? And the funny thing was, there were some people in the row in front, in the proper, who had paid for their seat, who were furious. Oh. But they couldn't bring themselves to say anything, <laughs> so instead they would just keep turning round and going... You know, a stern look. I'm doing a stern look, radio yeah. people. Oof. And uh, and it was quite... Um, it's stern. So I just went to sleep and had a nice sleep, then went back into my seat for landing. Yeah, they've got nothing Stuck to it to the man. If I if I'd paid top whack for first class and some guy crept in and sat behind me, I'd be upset if they were causing nonsense. Yeah, but I was just sleeping. But you were just sleeping. That's no problem. You just think, yeah, good on you, mate. Most people in first class haven't paid anyway. You know, it's they're on business or yep. something. Because who can afford to pay? It's usually about five or sometimes ten times as much as it is in economy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And that's why now I think a lot of the staff on those planes are aware of the fact that the people who have paid get very proprietorial. They don't yeah. like to see interlopers coming into their zone. Yeah. So as soon as you go in there and try and have a go at the first class labs, the ladies right there, bang. Sorry, sir. Curtain. You know, drawn yeah. across. Can little, you, ca can little cattle prod. Can get back you, to your seat. Exactly. Please, can you stick to your own lavis, please? The tiny lavis. Thank tiny you Tiny, so dirty lavis. Don't yeah. ever come up here again. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't even set foot. No, no, don't even look. Don't even look at it. It's not your place. Thank you. Don't come here ever again. <laughs> so that's what we're asking you about, listeners. Times that you have managed to successfully stick it to the man without the curtains being drawn on, on your ass. The email address, if you'd like to email us on this or any other subject, is adam and joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk or you can text us texts will be charged at your standard message rate at six four oh four six six four oh four six keep those texts and messages coming in and if you're listening to this program during the week on listen again or the podcast that's fine you can uh, email us it's not a problem don't text if it's during the week all right here's simeon mobile disco now and this is the audacity of huge with a bit of fat inside as well, a bit grizzled, that is nice big fat which is cooked, and I'm gonna cut it. Quite rough. This particular one, you can make it with any kind cheap cut of meat. Cheapest meat you have, a better taste, because there is inside a nice bit of fat inside. Yes, that's uh, Tupac with Dr. Dre, California Love. Adam and Joe program here on BBC Six Music with my friend Garth. Hello. How are you doing? I'm all right, Ed. How's it going there? Yeah, very enjoyable. Thank Good. you. Good. Nice to have you here. It's nice to be here. Uh, I, I was talking about greetings with uh, some folks yesterday. And, you know, like kissing people high and yeah. hugs and things like that. Yeah. Uh, what's your approach? Are you a hugging guy? I Yeah, I, I will hug you or kiss you depending on where you stand. Uh, so you're, <laughs> you're generally hugging. How quickly will you start hugging men? Uh, uh, f you won't do it on a first meeting. On a first meeting, no, that would be strange. Yeah. Um, Although I had a hug with a guy on a first, like at the end of a first meeting yesterday, I, we were hugging. Well, that, it depends how the meeting goes, doesn't mm. it? Yeah, it was fun. It was really nice to meet him. 
but and also uh, i think we've been talking about it so it was it was legitimized oh, you had to get just do it and how about ladies are you hugging the ladies are you kissing the ladies what are you going for normally a little kiss on both cheeks mm-hmm. mm. confident the, kiss on both cheeks yeah 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 that's what i like don't go for the lips no my friends uh, my swedish friends go for the lips yeah Per and Christina, they go right for your lips and they really smack on there. And it's mm. quite alarming when you first have that. So the man does it as well. He does it right on my face. Yeah. Uh, why, well, why I had to copy your Australian accent then, I don't it's know. A but anyway, of, it's the best accent. It's very easy to slip into. But anyway, yes, they, they like a full on smooch. Well, the lady, one of the ladies that I was speaking to yesterday said that sometimes what happens when people go in for a hug or when they're just standing there, perhaps in company and they sort of keep your, their, their arm around you sometimes like some people just keep their arm around a woman or something oh. you know what i mean like hey we're all friends anyway sometimes when people go in for a hug they say apparently they reach around a little too far and the hand comes to rest on the sort of breastal area oh <laughs> well i don't do that no no that's naughty and then the, and then uh, the lady i was speaking to said i find it very annoying when men go in for a weak hug she said I'd prefer like a big proper bear hug type. Thing. Oh, I know you mean where you're just sort of like sh- putting your arms around them and touching them and a touching bit. them because like, you don't want to get sued. Yeah, like like <laughs> yes, exactly. I don't. I'm touching you, but not, listen, yeah. you can almost hear that. I'm not. I'm not trying to touch any of your parts. I'm just giving you a little touch for some human contact. It's, <laughs> it's kind of like a granny hug, isn't it? Yeah. You well, know? no, my like grandma was big very... on the hugs as well. You, you, do, you have to get in there. But if you're hugging like a very fragile old person or something, you wouldn't go in for a big man hug. That's true. You might hurt them. But generally, you got, I suppose you should think about it as a, like a handshake. No one wants a, you know, a weak handshake. No. What about the, what about the overemphasized handshake? Yeah, the, what the constant shaking one. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there doing that. That's just a bit silly. It's like showing off. Yes. I'm not going to let go of your hand. And right, just right. shaking it all over the place. Pumping, pumping, pumping. Yeah, that, what I do in that scenario is just stare at my hand with really wide eyes. Mm-hmm. Just stare at it while it's shaking as if, you know, what's this? And the other thing this um, girl was talking about was how angry she gets again with, um, you know, a, a hesitant kiss. Like a hesitant peck, not sure which way to go for. She would rather, she said, get a full-on lip smooch yeah. than have someone go in for a bit of a weedy peck on, I'm not sure which cheek to peck. I normally find that if i go going to give a lady a kiss goodbye, mm. that she just throws her cheek at me. Yeah. She's not going to, she's not coming in with the kisses. No. It's not mutual. But surely, I was thinking, I said to her, like, but if the doctor, you know, that's fair enough if you're, uh, you know, Pierce Bronholm. But if your Dr. Buckle's going in there with your hairy little face yeah. and you're expecting a lip kiss from someone at the end of a meeting, you're going to get sent to prison. Yeah, it's going to end in jail. <laughs> <laughs> and in absolute jail. Yeah, absolute jail. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, you know, I'd be curious to know if there's anyone out there with any special techniques or any things that they like in a greeting. That kind of thing. You never reach around. The other thing that these ladies were talking about was people letting like i think it's tall people big long gangly people with the big long rangy arms they don't know what to do with their arms sometimes so that's when you find the arms drifting around to the breastal zone or sometimes coming to rest on the butox well i've never had that i've never had that by i mean i suppose you've just got to be very careful Mm -hmm. and take your time yeah. And just think about it, you know, just take... Just Treat every woman as if she were a nun. <laughs> <laughs> That's my technique. <laughs> so actually you should kneel before them and, and make the sign of the cross. Yeah. yeah. Pray, pray to them and confess all the terrible things you've done. <laughs> 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 and see if they still want to snog you. Yeah. Okay, before we say goodbye, I'm just going to kneel here and just tell you what I did last week. Yeah, I've got a few things to confess. Yeah. Um, okay, it's free play time. Now, I have to say that I played this on the Adam and Joe program before, but I really love it. And I think the first time I played it, I didn't even know who it was by or what it was called or anything, because it was one of those things I'd got off a friend, off their MP3 player or whatever, and right. it was just untitled. So, And it didn't work on the Shazam thing where you hold it up to the phone and, you know, you hold the phone up yeah, to the yeah. speaker and uh, none, of, none of it worked. And I couldn't find it on the internet or anything. And then... I can't remember exactly how I narrowed it down. I think I heard some music by this band that this guy is part of, and he's a part of a German kind of rap combo called the Fantastic Four, or Die Fantaschen, Die Fantastischen Wir. Um, and he's called Thomas D, and they sounded a bit similar. So I thought, ah, 
I bet that's the guy. And sure enough, I, I tracked it down. The track is called Liebesbrief by Thomas D. Hope you enjoyed this bit of nice German rapping in it. That's good, isn't it? I mean, there's times when a bit of German really hits the spot. Bit of German. Nice Driving bit of German. Driving motorway at night. Some nice German. That's Thomas D. And the track is called Liebesbrief. Yeah, I liked it. I got a little message here about, you know, the um, the whole social etiquette thing. It's from Lucy. It says, apropos of your handshake conversation, the headmaster of the primary school I teach in gave the whole school a handshake lesson in assembly last week, or this week rather, focusing on the importance of a strong shake. An important life lesson, I thought. Not bad. For, that's from Lucy. That's Good a genuine idea. thing that the headmaster sat them all down and said, this is how you're going to do it. Yeah. And then you reach around so you can just get the edge of the Bristol zone and then pop your hand on the Butox. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time for some pop appropriation. Let's have the jingle. I like to change the lyrics of songs from time to time. Not the taskbar. To make them refer to things I do. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I call it appropriation, and as far as I'm aware, it isn't a crime. I wonder if it's something you do too. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. There you go. So that more or less explains the idea of appropriation. I think <laughs> quite hard for people to say sometimes or to write down. You just think of pop rope. Pop appropriation. All right, got it. That's all it is. Here, yeah, I'm going to tear one off for you, Garth, mate, because you know you're our guest. Oh, so this is my little one. That's one for a little bit later. You can read it and and digest it in your digestive system, mate. Uh, I'll give you an example though. Here's one from um, James from Highgate. He says, "Hey, when I'm in dire need of a haircut, I sing to the tune of the Bonnie Tyler song." I need a haircut. I'm holding out for a haircut. Yes, a haircut. That's right. Well, it's gotta be short and it's gotta be neat and it's gotta be something I like. <laughs> I need a haircut. <laughs> a I'm holding out for a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> that's really I need good. A haircut. I'm holding out for a haircut in the morning light. <laughs> I like that one. Oh, I can't possibly top it. Uh, this is from Nathan in London. Uh, following on your theme of uh, Beatles tunes, I used to sing to myself to the tune of Here Comes the Sun. Here comes my mum. Do -do -do -do. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Here Every comes my mum and she's all right. She's all right. I've got one which is when I need the toilet on in my office. The toilet's quite far away, so I always have to run to the loo. So I sing um, I'm Gonna Run to You by Brian Adams, which ah. is I'm gonna run to the loo. When the feeling's right, I'm gonna run all night. I'm gonna run to the loo. <laughs> That's how I do it. I thought you were going to go for Iron Maiden. Run to the line. <laughs> Run, Run for your for life. Run your life. <laughs> There's another one for oh, you, mate. I like the fact you're tearing them off now. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. A little bit of uh, confetti. Here's another one from Meredith. She's female. 16 and not old enough to know any better. Uh, hi, Adam and Joe and Garth. I have a nice bit of appropriation for you. My best friend's dad started doing this once when they were eating buns. But now it's absolutely all I can sing whenever I hear this song. Uh, Breakfast in America by Supertramp she's talking about. And is this a kind of a bun, a Belgian? A Belgian bun? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think you can have that. So she says, take a look at my Belgian. Belgian, it's the only bun I got. Do 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 do. It's not much of a Belgian. Belgian, there's half a cherry on the top. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. That's good, Meredith. Oh God, what have I got? Um, hang on. Uh, I uh, this guy, um, Keith from Hartmanden, he says, I often put my laptop into sleep mode to take a short break to eat or something. And when I wake up, uh, it's from a sl uh, from its slumber, the laptop wakes up. Sorry, not when I wake up. When my laptop wakes up, the screen shows the words resuming windows. I then proceed to cheerfully sing when I'm resuming windows to the George the tune of George Formby's when I'm cleaning windows. There you go. I'm resuming windows. <laughs> Sorry, Keith, I read that out very badly, but it was a good one. Oh, that's good, man. <laughs> uh, and finally, for pop appropriation today... Actually, no, we've got a couple more that I want to share with you. This is from John Webster. He's a male man from Macclesfield. Uh, he says, My wife quite often leaves things precariously balanced in the kitchen. So does mine! 
This can be a dangerously teetering pile of drying up or some badly placed consumables on the pantry shelves. And if I'm not careful, it can lead to quite a serious gravity-based disaster when reaching to grasp an object, for example, my favourite mug or a jar of peanut butter. I mentally refer to these situations as booby traps, even though I'm sure my wife doesn't create them on purpose. But whenever I encounter one of these situations, I sing the words... Booby trap doo 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 to the <laughs> <laughs> in the style of boogie nights by Heatwave. If my wife hears me, it annoys her. Uh, so now I've changed it. So I sometimes sing precarious <laughs> <laughs> instead of notorious by Duran Duran. I don't think it's really helped matters. Hope you don't think I'm not completely mentile. Love you, bye, says John Webster from Macclesfield. John, I totally sympathise, and I'm going to be using those myself because my wife sets booby traps as well. Her favourite thing is to get like when we have guests and stuff she'll make coffee and things and she'll put out a little milk jug right yeah uh, rather than just because she's fancy well, that's nice she Don't doesn't put out a whole the table no because it would be so ugly God. so ugly to have the carton on the table so she gets a little milk jug pops it out there very nice but then afterwards when people have gone if there's still some milk left she doesn't want to chuck it away and waste the milk so she pops it back in the fridge but what happens is you get no one's going to use that little flipping milk jug after that so you get a whole collection of these milk jugs teetering on piles of you know low-fat spread and yogurt and stuff at the very top of the fridge and the other day i went in there to 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 grab me uh low cholesterol spread module okay and <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that sound <laughs> and so i knock off the one of the flipping teetering milk jugs oh. and it tips right the way down the back of the fridge and it starts dripping i could hear it dripping on each one of the shelves you know all over you every single item there furious i was fuming i half an hour half an hour i spent that i couldn't afford taking every soaking? single thing out of the flipping fridge and and uh hosing it all down taking all the trays out i mean it needed a, a, a clean anyway so i guess it was worth and did it. you did you as you were cleaning it out really do it aggressively so it was silently but aggressively no. so your wife was aware that not you silently. were really angry yeah she was doing some work in the next room so i i knew that it was unfair to really give her a hard time because essentially i i should have taken more care getting the stuff out however i was furious so every like right the way through the cleaning process which kept on getting messier and smelly i don't like milk very much and it was all yeah, smelly. You're a bit weird with the dairy yeah, stuff. Like the dairy yeah. stuff. So every time I was clean, I was like, oh, God, are you done? <laughs> oh, for good, oh, oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> so, so she could hear me, you know. Because it always finds, the milk always soaks into the pizza box and then reduces it to a sort of mush, doesn't it? Oh, well, then yeah, it's all dear. yellow and crusty. It's a living nightmare! Thank you very much for all your appropriation this week. And we have skidded right past uh, the 12.30 mark. It is time for the news. That's Malcolm McLaren there. Cheeky Malcolm with Double Dutch. And this is BBC Six Music, the Adam and Joe programme here with uh, the mighty Garth Jennings. Hello. Filling in for Joe. How are you doing, mate? I'm hanging in there for Joe. Now, listen, let's have a couple of text the nation uh, things right now, OK? Because we were talking about sticking it to the man earlier on. And people have been uh, regaling us with a couple of the things that they do just to make themselves feel a little bit le a bit better about some of the more unfair aspects of life. Actually, a lot of people are just <laughs> sending in stories yeah. about them nicking things. Yeah, it's quite bad, actually. Which is, well, you know, we're not encouraging that. We want sort of legitimate ways of, um, you know, getting your own back. Can we have a little jingle for this bit, James? Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Here's one from Gina, and this is very nice. Uh, she says, My rather pathetic way of sticking it to the man relates to the pay and display business of car parks. I hate them. You don't know how long you're going to be, and so inevitably you overpay. A recent example of this was when I went to St. Ives. The car park was very expensive. We arrived mid-morning and had to pay a huge amount for a ticket that lasted until 8 p.m., even though we knew we wouldn't be there that long. So when we left around 3 p.m., I made sure to give the ticket to someone who was a arriving so the man wouldn't get another fee take that man <laughs> i always do this thanks gina i do that too and that is very satisfying isn't it it is nice in your face 
Christ, man! I did it at a hospital recently. Because uh-huh. the hospital car parks, you invariably have to buy one of those things. And you think, oh, no. And you're buying, spending loads of money on it. And especially at hospital, it's rather nice to say, hey, hey, yeah. here, have this. Exactly. And they've got another, you know, two hours on it. Hi, I'm Jesus. And <laughs> uh, I've got extra time on my car park. I was wondering if you'd like it. The awful thing is if you've got a number of people to choose mm. and you, you start selecting on the, their appearance... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Right, you're yeah. sort of looking around thinking, well, I could give this to anyone. <laughs> they don't look like they deserve it. <laughs> they don't deserve it. They're not, you know, they're just not down enough. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Isn't they it? don't look troubled by this enough. <laughs> well, it's, it was nothing for them to buy a ticket, but those guys over there, yeah. I could make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's rich. He doesn't deserve it. I know I do that sometimes when I'm, I'm getting off the tube if I've bought a travel pass, like a day travel pass, mm. and I know that I've done my last journey. I look around at the other end and think, no. Oh, Whose day am I going to make? <laughs> it's like the secret millionaire. St. Buckulis is going to bestow upon someone one of the greatest gifts that they have ever received <laughs> in their pathetic lives. A day travel pass to take them wherever they want within most of the zones of the London tubal system. <laughs> and uh, usually I go and I try and be counterintuitive. Like I'm aware of the fact that I'm screening out students <laughs> and, yeah. and rich looking people. And I'm trying to go for offbeat people. And then I think, no, come on. The students and the richos sometimes they need a break too yeah but you don't want to give it to someone in a group because then you've isolated them. exactly you've right. made them the favorite yeah. and then you've ruined everything but then the thing that happens sometimes is what i do is i'm thinking about it so much that i hang around for way too long and i start oh, looking no. creepy that and i look creepy. i look like someone who wants to sell their ticket because that's the other thing you get is people saying hey do you want to buy a ticket no not really i'll buy my own um, so people think I'm going to charge them. So you go up to someone and you say, Hey, hi, I'm St. Buckley's. Would you like my day travel pass? And they're like, well, no, no, I'm just going to buy one. Thanks. No, no, I'm, I'm giving it to you. I'm St. Buckley's. <laughs> my hairy, smiley face. <laughs> and they, uh, I don't wear these sandals for nothing. And you, you very seldom get the kind of response that you're imagining, like, you know, the arms being thrown around. Thank you so much. That's the kindest thing anyone's yeah. ever done for me. Most people are like, you're weird. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'll take it, you weirdo. But thank Just you very to get much. Get you out of my face for that one, uh, there, Gina. I very much strongly agree with your whole approach. Here's one from Ed from Birmingham. He says, "Hi, Adam. Hi, Garth. When I was a teenager, me and my friends would always go to a supermarket cafe after school to hang out. We were quite sophisticated and would always have a cup of tea. We discovered, though, that if we ordered a pot of tea for one and a pot of hot water, we could make the pot of tea for one stretch between two, thus only paying." for one ah, ha, ha. in your face man <laughs> we eventually got rumbled um because it, uh, we eventually got rumbled and it brought an end to our little after school gatherings i still look back on that period as one of the best in my life says ed yeah. from birmingham that sounds like the best time of anyone's life and he was sticking it to the tea man but in a way he was paying a price because it was getting quite weak that tea by then <laughs> well exactly you know you just end up like sticking it to the man and drinking rubbish tea yeah. so how was that good uh, okay, right now, I think um, we're going to move on and play a little stuff. Uh, okay, I'm going to start that sentence again. All right? <laughs> Not happy with that sentence, listeners. I'm starting again. Just press the undo button. Okay, right now, it's time for a little bit of fun that our <laughs> guest, Garth Jennings, has brought in this week. Garth, tell us about this. <laughs> How's that? Sorry, you can't set it up like that. I'll lose it. <laughs> okay, years ago, when I first came in, stood in for Joe, I, um, uh, we, 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 we both uh, agreed to make pirate radio interruptions. Yeah. Based on the whole idea that when you drive around town, you often get your, you know, FM broadcast interrupted by the local pirate radio stations. Yeah, we were and speaking about it earlier. Yeah, yeah. and they're, they're quite fun. And, um, and we took talked about uh, making some more and you haven't no so i'm thanks. sorry but uh i managed to make a few more this week with a couple of new ones as well um there's also some cab local cab company um interruptions um so uh they're peppered throughout this next track which is take me with you by prince um i'm sorry prince fans but i hope the rest of you enjoy these interruptions we're going to drop the new one from DJ Sprocker. Here it is. Drop it. What's that? Oh, I don't like that. We're coming to you live from my Nan's Greenhouse. Sorry about the strawberries getting squashed, Nan. Don't care. Pub for Dave, picking up from Lanestow. Going to Shepherd's Bush. If anyone's going near the chip shop, can they pick me up a Savaloy? 
picking up 15 people from the King's Head and taking them to the hospital. Passenger name Cameron going to the planet Pandora. Got a text on my phone right now. Is it from here? Uh, it's Richard. Oh, it's a picture of his feet. Why won't anyone return my calls? Anyone? I'm so lonely. And this room smells of fish. There's quite a lot of interference on that one. Yeah, sorry about that interference there, folks. Picking up a local cab company, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, okay, now I think we're going to have uh, a bit, a few more travelling tales, right? Let's have the jingle again, James. Travelling tales, travelling tales, tales of travelling on the train, or an automobile, or an aeroplane. I want to know what your travelling tales. All aboard the Skylark! And in this section, we're going to be dealing with conductors, uh, people, you know, the people on the trains that do the talking. Yeah. Like some t- are they the drivers or are they the ticket collectors that do the talking? I think it's the people that collect the tickets generally, isn't it? The conductors, they yeah. would be called. Anyway, um, also the phenomenon of people on planes as well who like to do a bit of patter when they're mm. giving the instructions at the beginning of the flight or I whatever. I don't like any patter. No. Did you ever hear the American flight attendant doing his rapping? Oh, uh, yes, I heard about that, yeah. It was a couple of years ago. Mm. David Holmes, his name was. He became a YouTube sensation in 2009 uh, after someone filmed him rapping his welcome aboard spiel on the plane. I'd never seen that before, but uh, let's see. Martin, age 22, says, Hey, Count Bocules and Monsieur Cornballs and Dr Jennings. Been listening for a few years now. First time writing in. This is not my own travelling tale, but thought you might like this amazing airline stu- steward. I'm now tempted to try and travel on their airline. So he absolutely loves this. Uh, Martin, age 22. But Dr Buckles would be a tiny bit more grumpy about this kind of thing. Here's a clip of David Holmes in action. It has to be said, though, he's pretty good. Like, at first you think, oh, don't rap, please don't rap. And he's getting all the passengers to join in and do the beat for him and everything. And when you're watching the video, you think, please, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Yeah. But actually, he, he, he does a decent job of it. Here's a bit of him in action. Good evening, folks. Welcome aboard Southwest oh, Airlines you. Flight 372, service to Oklahoma City. All I need you to do is stomp and clap, and I'm going to do the rest, because I just, I've had five flights today, and I just cannot do the regular boring announcement again, otherwise I'm going to put myself to sleep. So, you guys with me? All right. So, give me a stomp, clap, stomp, clap. Come on, stomp, clap, stomp, clap. Stay on beat there. There you go. Keep that going. This is flight 372 on SWA. The flight attendant's on board serving you today. Teresa in the middle, David in the back. My name is David and I'm here to tell you that Shortly after takeoff, first things first There's soft drinks and coffee to quench your thirst But if you want another kind of drink, then just holler Alcohol and beverages will be $4 If a monster energy drink is your plan That'll be $3 and you get the whole can We won't take your cash, you gotta pay with plastic Before we leave, our advice is Put away your electronic devices Fasten your seatbelt, then put your trays up Press the button to make the seat back raise up Sit back, relax have a good time. It's almost time to go, so I'm done with the rhyme. Thank you for the fact that I wasn't ignored. This is Southwest Airlines. Welcome aboard. Yay. That is impressive. He's good, though, isn't he? I can imagine that not working quite so well in England. That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, here's a little clip of um, the guy on board my train. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, back to Norwich, uh, doing something similar. OK, London to Norwich train, give me a beat. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome on the train. I'm your conductor. I'm clinically insane. I'm going to entertain you while you're on the train. Every single station, I'll do it all again. Please don't smoke. There's no smoking section. Please have your tickets ready for inspection. Don't use the toilets in the station, please. It makes the whole place smell of booze and wheeze. If you don't want no one sitting next to you, say there's someone sitting there and they've gone to the loo. Or pile up your bags or pretend you're asleep. Then everyone will know you're a selfish little creep. That means you. Dr. Buckles, thank you. 
<laughs> That's superb. That a little bit personal at the end there, oh, isn't it? Oh, dear. But now, on the whole, it's not a good thing, is it, when when they start getting into the rapping and stuff? Anything that's over-familiar, I just don't like it. You want to keep it functional. Sure, Especially sure. on a plane. You know, it's a nervous environment. There's A lot of people are frightened of flying and they're nervous anyway. It's not a relaxing way to travel. And the last thing you want is some guy doing his flipping Britain's Got Talent audition yeah, for you. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Because you can't all be David Holmes. All right? So stop it! Nonsense! Nonsense! <laughs> Nonsense! <laughs> okay, here's some more music for you, listeners. This is Friendly Fires with True Love. Well, maybe she'd just be more lovable. Maybe that's your problem. That's Friendly Fires with uh, the song they just done, True Love. <laughs> Was it? <laughs> <laughs> suddenly the name of the song vanished from the computer screen as it finished folks that's it for our show today thank you very much indeed for listening liz kershaw is up next so please stay tuned don't forget that the podcast version of this show will be available this evening after around 6 p.m and you can hear our song wars songs again they're also available on the blog bbc.co.uk slash blog slash adam and joe you can vote by email email only please for the song wars voting and just put vote adam or vote garth you don't need to put a message message in there uh just put vote adam or vote garth in the headings there for our song wars songs the voting closes at 11 p.m on friday the 27th just before our next program we'll be back at the same time of course next week and joe will be back in the seat but garth jennings thank you very much hey thanks for having me everybody it was really nice to see you again it's lovely to have been here and thanks for all your hard work and your jingles and your jongles and your interruptions and your song war stuff and best of luck with everything and we hope to see you soon take care listeners here's the stones love you bye bye